So in this video, we're going to use the Lorentz series to find the residues of this function here. f of z equals 2 minus e to the minus 2iz over z squared. Now z is our complex variable. So z is in the complex plane and it's represented by a plus bi. So that's our basics with our variable there. Now, Lorentz series. Now, it's very similar to the ta Taylor series, but it has a real part or analytic part, and it also has a singular part. Now, we can create that from the Taylor series of certain functions. Now, we see in this function here, we've got the exponential function to the minus 2iz. So that is the function we'll use to create the Taylor series. Now, here... We've got z squared. Now that bit, bit there tells us where this function has its singularities. Now at z equals zero, that's where the singularities are because then that will become non-analytic. So z equals zero is the singularities. So, and at that point there, we can see as it's raised to the power of two, there are two. So there's two singularities and in this case, they're called simple poles because they're just over z squared. So simple poles. So two simple poles. So we know that. Now we what want to do is to calculate the value of the residues at that point. So first of all, just looking at the function again, we've got the exponential function. Now, what do we know already? Well, we know we can create a Taylor series from the exponential function. That's one of the most famous ones of all. So e to the z is represented in the Taylor series from n equals zero to infinity of z to the n over n factorial. So that's what we got so far. Now, if I just expand on this a little bit, then this becomes one plus z plus z squared over 2 plus z cubed over 6 plus z to the 4 over 24 and so on. So that's pretty basic. We've got that so far. That's something we already probably know. Now, what we want to do now is turn this into a Lorentz series, this whole function. Now, to do that, what we can do is here. We see here in the exponential, we've got this minus 2iz. Now, here we've got e to the z is this one. So if I write this one on here, I've got e to the minus 2iz. Plugging that into there, then that will become n equals 0 to infinity of this input into here replacing the z. So now I've got minus 2iz to the n over n factorial. So now I need to expand that out in the same way that I did this one. So wherever I see a z, I'm going to substitute minus 2iz. So let's plug that in. This 2 and z squared, we're going to come to that in a moment. At the moment, we're just dealing with this and we're not even into the minus sign yet. So let's expand this one out. So where we see a z, substitute that in. So I've got 1, that will stay. OK, now I've got a z. So now minus 2iz for that, I can just write minus 2iz. So that would now become minus and I'll write minus. 2iz. Here I've got z squared, so now let's add that and write minus 2iz squared all over 2. And same again for these terms. So then plus minus 2iz cubed over 6, and then minus 2iz to the 4 over 24. And again, that could keep going on and on, but I've chosen to stop there. OK, so now let's simplify this. So now this becomes 1 
minus two IZ. Okay, nothing to do there. So now what can we do here? Well, the denominator, I'm just going to keep that for the moment. So I'm not going to choose my sign just yet. So I've got a two there. Now I've got to square this. Well, minus two squared will give me four. I squared will give me minus one. So I'll put my minus one in there. And then the Z squared, that's just my variable squared. So that's pretty straightforward. Obviously I've got some cancellations I can do here. And I'll just leave that as a plus there because I've got the minus one in there taking care of things. Now we're going to simplify again on this line. So now let's take care of this one. So now I've got minus two IZ cubed. Minus two cubed gives me minus eight. So I'm just going to put my minus eight in there so we can see all of the building blocks as we go along. And then I've got I squared, I, sorry, I cubed. So I cubed is the same as minus one times I, which is minus I. So that stays as minus I. And then Z cubed, that's just my a variable cubed and that's still divided by six and now come to the last one let's raise this one to the power of four so now i've got let's just do one bit of time minus two to the power of four that becomes positive 16. i to the power of four well i squared is minus one so if i square that again i'll just get one so i to the power of four is one and then i've got z to the four so that takes care of that all over 24. Okay, right. Let's see if we can simplify this even more. So one minus two I Z, that's all good. Let's simplify this off. So that will cancel out and give me a two. And I've got a minus sign, so that's minus two Z squared. So minus two Z squared. So that takes care of that. Let's have a look at this one. Well, I've got minus eight and minus I. So that means it can stay as positive. So positive. And then I've got uh, I, which will stay. So I'll keep that in there. And then I've got eight over six. So eight over six just gives me four over three and then Z cubed. So I've got four I Z cubed over three. And now this one, 16 over 24 is two thirds, and I've got z to the four. So I've got plus two z to the four over three, and that will continue. Okay, right, let's clear some space on the board and let's bring this to the top and let's see what we can do next. Okay, so that's everything up there now as we got so far. And I've updated the series here. I've got e to the minus two iz n equals zero to infinity, the sum of two to the n minus i z to the n over n factorial. So that's where we are so far with our uh, expansion of that term. Okay, now we need to take care of the two minus. Let's do that bit first. So first of all, let's just have a look at the minus. So if I now do e to the minus two i z, and put a minus in front of it, I'm effectively multiplying all the terms by a minus one. So let's do that. So then, basically, if I just put a positive in there, I can see all I've got to do now is flip all the signs uh, 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 which are corresponding to the coefficients of each term. So now flip all these signs, I've got minus one, minus two i z, uh, which is now positive, and then plus two z squared, minus 4iz cubed over 3 minus 2z to the 4 over 3 and so on. So that takes care of that. So now what I can do to update my series, I can put a minus sign in front and if I wish I could put a minus sign in here. So or I could put minus 1 to the end in there. Now either way all works. Now what I want to do is include this 2 in there. So now if I want 2 minus e to the minus 2iz. All I have to do now is subtract 2 from all of this. So I've got 2 minus 1 plus 2iz plus 2z squared minus 4i 
z cubed over 3 minus 2z to the 4 over 3. And that's all I need to do. So again, I could update my series and write 2 minus in front of it. So here I could just write 2 minus and then put 2 minus there. And that again, that would be good to update my series. Okay, let's just put a squiggle there. Right, now, I'm not quite there yet. I've got this numerator now all sorted, but I want this z squared now to appear. So if I write now this term here, so I've got 2 minus e to the minus 2iz and divided by z squared, now all I have to do is divide each term by z squared. So what I've got here, we can simplify this. We can see that straight away. 2 minus 1 is a 1. So I've got 1. And then I can divide that by the z squared. And that will stay as positive. Now 2 and minus 1 I've combined. Now I've got plus 2iz divided by z squared. So that's going to give me plus 2i over z. So z divided by z squared will give me z. Same here now. 2z squared divided by z squared is just going to give me 2. This one here, I've got 4i z cubed over 3 divided by z squared. That's just going to give me more, minus 4i z over 3. So that would take care of that. And the same again, divide this one by z squared. I've got minus 2z squared over 3. And you can see here what's happened now. So here I've got my real part or analytic part. And here I've got my singular part where all the negative powers of z. So here's positive powers of z and including 0. That's my real or analytic part. And I'm just going to end this series off here with O, Z cubed. So that's my O notation there just to signify the end of my calculations for that series. So now the original question was, use the Lorentz series to find the residues of the function. So here we've got our Lorentz series. So the Lorentz series is the whole thing. OK, so here we've got the analytic part. So this bit is analytic or real. And here we've got the singular part. So here, just put that one there. That's the singular. Now, what we can do now to find the residues of this function, we look to the singular part and we look to the coefficient of z to the minus 1. So z to the minus 1 is what we're interested in, or 1 over z. Now, the coefficient of that will determine our value of our residue. So we can see here it's a complex residue and it represents 2i. So the answer to this is 2i. So that's our residue of that function at z equals 0, which is the non-analytic part. So here, that's the key term there to give us our answer. And we can see here with the plus sign, that gives us our residue. Okay.